ship is rigged for dive with the exception of staging cups. Very well dived. Anybody will tell you that it's a very difficult challenge bringing. I've launched missiles before, so but I'm more so excited to see these new up-and-coming sailors actually experience this for the first time and actually get to do their job because this isn't something that missile techs get to do that often. This is the captain. The launch of a Daiso missile has been directed. There's not that many missile technicians that actually do launch missiles. And it's a very nervous kind of feeling, but I'm very excited to do it. I'm very prepared. Second mission for us, you. You was at a third. That will be time. Call up and stand by for power order. Supervisor weapons, initiate fire. Initiate fire, our sir. It's Khan, you have to fire. Weapons are power to fire. Ten seconds. I think for the main, get them back on the front lines and actually go out there to support the fleet would mean a lot to them. It would kind of give them a break and say, okay, you know what? There's another submarine out there that can take up some of the slack. 15 away. First missile away. Missile away. Welcome aboard. I'm Commander Mike Tobin, CEO on board USS Maine. It is my pleasure to welcome you in this virtual tour. I hope after this encounter, you come away with a good understanding of the exertions my crew perform on a daily basis, and also some of the capabilities that the submarine force performs on your behalf. Good morning, guys. Welcome to USS Maine. Today, I'll be your tour guide. My name is M21 Pouchet. Uh, here we are at our first stop behind me, which is the Navigation Center, and I'll be handing you off to ETV-3 Borlon, who'll be your tour guide for Nav Center. All right, guys, let's go. My name is Pedro Borlon, I'm a Navi T. Uh, we're working in Nav Center. That's where we are today. Our major purpose is to have ships positioned to keep the ships safe when we're navigating around in the waters, and then 
also to support the mission of launching missiles. We have a lot of stuff that we can't talk about, but um, our major purpose is to give that position so we can fill in the, the world's mission of strategic deterrence. All right, guys, now that we are done with our tour and navigation center with ETB-3 Borderline, we will be going and conducting our tour in the control room. The tour guide for that will be ITS-1 Wilson. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go on out there. Welcome to Control, um, really the brains of the submarine. Here we operate um, the submarine, changing buoyancies, directions of the submarine. Um, where I'm standing right now, the officer to deck will pass orders to the helm, one of our most junior uh, enlisted spots. I also have, you know, senior enlisted over here as well, managing the buoyancy, managing the direction of where we are going. Over here, we have our, our fire control with the assistance of sonar and their tracking contact, making sure we don't run into potential contacts out there. Here, we, we manage casualties. Everything will be managed from control. It's, it really is the brains of the operation. Whether we get strategic tasking from the President of the United States or from STRATCOM, all the decisions for the submarine are based out of control. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed your time up here in control with ITS-1 Wilson. From here, we'll be headed on down to the torpedo room to speak with the Sue Conklin. Hi, I'm TN2 Conklin from the USS Maine. Uh, today, we're gonna show you the torpedo room. So behind me, I have the weapons launch console. We use the weapons launch console to help communicate weapons launching operations between fire control. Uh, we have four torpedo tubes. On the plus side screen, we have torpedo tubes two and four. So these right here are called dollies. These are 80 pounds. These are teddy bears. These actually, you could attach the uh, dollies on top of these so that we can move this in a store's position as right now we have uh, no torpedoes on board. This right here is the rail for our rabbits and normally we don't move these but we move the actual torpedoes. This goes all throughout the line of our tube loading and weapon um, handling tray and with that we use those to move the torpedoes. These are the DC battle lanterns so it's called DC for damage control. So if we lose power, uh, we can use these to actually operate so that we can actually still see things using this DC lighting. Now that we are done down in the torpedo room with Petty Officer Conklin, we're here up on second level. We're gonna be going to the missile control center, which is my space along with uh, MT1 McDonald. I'll be turning you guys over to him once we're in there and he'll be giving you your tour of missile control center. So let's, let's go ahead and get it going. All right guys, this is uh, MT1 McDonald. This is MCC. In here we monitor the safety and security of the weapon system and also maintain targeting and launcher. So at the launcher console is where we can control opening hatches, shutting hatches, monitoring tube temperatures and pressures. And on the fire control side is where we maintain the guidance system in the missiles themselves. So you can think of launcher as the, the bronze of the weapon system and fire control as the brains of the operation. Thank you guys for stopping by MCC. Now I'm gonna turn you back over to Pitt Officer Crochet. Hey everyone, now that we're done talking in the Missile Control Center with Pitt Officer McDonald, here we have one of the several staterooms that we have on board USS Maine. This one in particular is the WEPS and AWEPS stateroom. Here they would have their desks with computers and workstations. Unfortunately, we had to have them up due to the nature of the work that we do here for this video. Here is the wardroom. This is where the officers dine. They have all their meals here. Um, and it's all assigned seating. So you have like a captain, XO, and then everyone else can just fill in where need be. Um, and then up here, we have a lot of namesake stuff from the state of Maine and old ships that were the Maine previously. Stuff down when commissioning happened and when special bottles of beer were brewed. Uh, additional purpose of the wardroom, this table, it should a time come where it'd be necessary, hopefully not. Uh, if Doc had to perform an emergency surgery while underway, it would take place in the wardroom. So now we're gonna go ahead and head down into the galley. Um, as you can see, the ship is pretty much torn apart back down to the bare bones right now during a reefing environment. The, the ship is normally not this tight fitting uh, throughout the underway process. All of these repairs would have been made all the temporary ducting would no longer be required, but if you guys follow me, I'll take you into the galley. During the underway, we'll have soda, milk, ice water, our coffee machine, coffee machine being the most important, of course. Normally, when you get ready for your on-watch period, you'd be standing coming through line here. 
and you'd have your dishes uh, that are prepared by the CS division. Culinary specialists, we have a griddle in here, uh, two fryers, two ovens, three large steam kettles that they use to prepare the food for the watch section during the underway period. All right, now that we're done showing off the galley, we're gonna head into the mythical apartment. Uh, and as you can see here, we have quite a few of our sailors here enjoying their lunches. Uh, normally the cruise mess is not this torn up, but again, during a refit environment, you have a lot of maintenance items that require a lot of things to change throughout the ship. All right, so heading this way, we're heading towards one of our water tight doors on board USS Maine. Uh, these are the separations between each compartment that provide watertight integrity. Should there be any casualty, we can then shut this and then dog it. That way, no water or pressure will escape. Hey guys, here we are on this part of my second level up at camp with Petty Officer Daly. Petty Officer Daly will be giving you a brief tour of camp and uh, essentially what the camp watch does. So I'm, I'm Petty Officer Daly. Here we have the camp watch. He is overall in charge of the missile compartment. He verifies different evolutions, the security, the different support systems. If anything is out of specs, he verifies it on the status board, which shows different evolutions, the status of each tube. He's also the security for the missile compartment. All right, here we are on the missile compartment second level, just aft of camp. Uh, here is 215, and we have this sticker on uh, 215 and symbolizes that this is one of the two missiles that we launched during DASO 30, uh, that was earlier this year. Uh, so the crew, we went ahead and we went and put this sticker up just that way anytime anybody walked by, we knew that Tube 15 was launched by the Blue Crew. Tube 6 has one as well with another blue skull on it. I will be uh, dropping off with Petty Officer Rescue, who will be giving you a brief rundown of the supply department. Go ahead, Petty Officer. Thank you, Petty Officer Touche. So right here is where all the parts on the boat get sent to us from every single department on the boat. Uh, we process every single part using our supply. And then once we process it, work them, uh, we send them off the boat, process parts. And then also every single day we receive parts to hand out to all the departments here on the boat. Hey guys, here we are in uh, Machinery 2. This is Petty Officer Darby. They'll be giving you a tour throughout uh, Machinery 2 this morning. As Auxiliary Division, uh, we're in charge of all the hydraulics on board. We're in charge of all the high pressure air, all the plumbing systems, the sanitary systems, so everybody has a place to shower. All the drinking water, uh, we're also in charge of uh, lots of piping, hydraulic blocks. Behind you, we have our CO2 scrubbers. Uh, this is how we get the CO2 out of the air. Uh, so all the air on the boat will come through this room and this is how we get all the CO2 out. Right back there are our COH2 burners. Uh, they get the CO and the H2 out of the boat. So let me tell you about how we make drinking water. Uh, so the nukes will take the undrinkable water and they will turn it into drinkable water through our reverse osmosis units. We're in charge of all the extinguishers, fire hoses, everything like that to make you know, everything safe so when we're on underway, we don't have to worry about any casualties or anything like that. We can take care of it all. Booyah. All right, so now that we're done with machinery too, so I'll take you guys down through this apartment third level. Uh, so here's where we would have the crew's laundry. We have two washing machines and two dryers, uh, and those are for the entirety of the crew to use. So for that process to work, we'll assign uh, different days and sign up times for each individual to be able to coordinate when they're off watch to be able to do their laundry. And then walking further down, you can see along the tubes, we have SCBAs, fire hoses. Uh, submarine's a very cramped environment, so we have to fit things where we can. Through here, we have our heads. So in there, we'll have three toilets and two showers for individuals to use. Uh, and they're pretty much open all day, every day, to be able to utilize. This is where all of the uh, junior individuals that are working on qualifications or even senior individuals at times can come down here and freshen up on their knowledge that they would need to further enhance their qualifications and career. Walking further down third level, you can see off to each side, we have all of our bunk rooms. There's 16 bunk rooms in total. Each bunk room is a nine-man birthing area, so they can fit nine individuals. So in here, we have nine individual racks. Uh, each one has a little bit of stowage space underneath it. That's where you're going to fit all of your, all of your clothes, all your, all your socks, underwear, t-shirts, your extra FRVs. You would take your Type threes off and place them in there, usually for the duration of the underwear. This is what the crew uses as their laundry bags. Right, so whenever you change, that's what you'd be, be putting your laundry. Each rack has a foot locker on it, so you have a little bit of extra storage space there. 
uh, to put your books or whatever kind of electronics you wanted to bring with you during the underwear. And then also each individual rack is assigned its own pee drawer. So this is like where you'd put your toiletries, if you brought any snacks or anything of the sorts that you wanted to bring with you in a way to keep private. And then this is the common locker. So each bunk room will have a common locker. And this is usually where people hang up their jackets, things like that. And then we'll fold and stow our tea bags in our common locker. Thank you for touring USS Maine. I hope MT-1 Pouche and our other crew members were able to broaden your knowledge about ballistic missile submarines and the job our U.S. Navy submariners perform. From all of us aboard USS Maine, stay safe and take care.